I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. It's way, way in the back of your Bibles. Uh, And by the way, there's a typo in your sermon notes. You may want to fix it right now. I say typo. I'm the one who wrote it wrong, and they just did it right. Uh, So that's on me. But uh, it says 1 Peter 1 in your your bullet notes. We're going to be in 1 Peter 2. We're going to look at a a verse there that uh, I want you to take home with you. I want that to be a difference maker in your life. If... uh, If you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1204, and you will find 1 Peter chapter 2. And as always, if you don't have a Bible and you want one, you want to read God's Word, uh, then please take one of these with you. It is our gift to you. We'd love for you to have the Bible, read the Bible, because we know if you do that, it will change your life. Hey, uh, welcome again to our service celebrating our purpose-driven life experience. Uh, I mean, the last few weeks, we've talked about our purpose, and we've talked about how we were created to worship God, that we were formed for God's family, that we were made to to be in relationship with others and have that connection, that uh, we're created to become like Christ, that that He wants to grow us in our character in, in this journey following Him. We've talked about how we are shaped for service and how we have been made for a mission. And, and we define that here at Calvary by leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of His people and the power of His truth. Uh, and my prayer is that these last seven weeks have been a life-altering experience for you. You've seen some that have said, hey, this is where God has led me and He's changed my life. And they're declaring that today. Uh, but I pray that it has been that way for all of you. And so as we come to the conclusion of the series, I want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, First of all, what now? What now? What are we supposed to do now? Because we've read the book, we've attended the services, we've met in our life groups, and now what? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 21, the Apostle Peter gives us a what now kind of answer. He says, For to this you have been called... Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. To this you were called, to follow in the steps of Jesus who gave us the example in his suffering. And and so I want you to understand first and foremost that this is the conclusion of a sermon series. It is not the end of your journey. Get that? This is the end of of an emphasis we've been having, a book we've been reading, but it's not the end of your journey. You see, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that He died on the cross to pay for your sins, and that He was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then that's just it. It is an open-ended commitment. It is a dynamic journey that you were on following Jesus. It doesn't end as long as you have breath. So if you are alive today, I believe that qualifies most of you in this room. You know, I got to confess, sometimes when I'm preaching and I see someone who fell asleep, I just want to jump off the stage and go over and go, are you okay? (laughs) Just to freak them out. But then I realize that if you can sleep in church, then you're at peace with God. It's all good. But if you snore in church, we're going to wake you up because you're bothering the people around you. But um, we're on a journey. Following Jesus is a a process that doesn't end as long as we have life. So what now? Let me share a couple of what nows. First of all, celebrate life change. Celebrate life change. Uh, These past few weeks, many of you have actively pursued Jesus in a fresh way, and God has responded by doing amazing and wonderful things. Uh, we, we started this off by asking you to make some commitments. We ask you uh, to show up for the series, to attend the services. And you guys have done that. Uh, I don't know if you realize this or not because you're, you're, you're in one of four services. But uh, we've averaged over 2,000 people in attendance on these weekends uh, during the Purpose Driven Life series. Kind of cool, isn't it? And uh, didn't know you uh, had that many friends and family members. Uh, we ask you to read. We gave you the books. We gave out 850 Purpose Driven Life books. We said, read the books. Uh, and by the way, if you didn't finish the book yet, don't stop reading. It, you know, I, I know some of you get behind a little bit and you got distracted and, and you're like, well, I'm on only halfway through and my life group's done. And No, finish the book. There's great stuff in it. Uh, keep reading it. Uh, we ask you to participate. We had 70 life groups with over 800 people participating in the study. And then, of course, uh, this weekend, uh, you guys got to see a bunch of them, but we've got over 22 baptisms scheduled 
for this weekend to celebrate life change. And, and let me just say this, on the subject of baptism, if, if God has told you, hey, I want you to get baptized and you haven't been obedient yet, then uh, you might want to step out right now and find Pastor Chet out in the main lobby. He'll be glad to uh, talk with you, and, and we'll baptize you at the end of the service, man. We got no problem with that. Beginning of next service, if you think that you, you can want to wait that long, we, we don't care. We want to help you be obedient to Christ, and we want to celebrate life change. A and I hope you realize that wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever your experiences have been, God can change your life. That's why we celebrate life change. That's why we want to remind you week in and week out that God can alter who you are and what you've been through, and he can redeem your life. Uh, one of the best things about being a pastor here at Calvary is I get to hear a lot of stories of how God has been changing your life. And I ask you to share some of the stories with us, and i got to tell you, first of all, I couldn't read everybody's stories, but we want to share some of these testimonies of what God has been doing in the last few weeks, months, even years uh, in people's lives as they put it down on paper and allowed us the privilege of sharing. So uh, the other pastor, Chad, and I want to share uh, these stories with you. Uh, the first one is from Adela, and, and she says, Someone had given me the Purpose Driven Life book at the beginning of last year. I hadn't read the book because some people around me told me that it was evil. And basically put a fear inside of me. And then when I heard that Calvary was going to do this study, I felt a leaping within my soul to read the book. So I'm glad that I decided to read The Purpose Driven Life and participate in the study. It's helped me in my Christian walk and reminded me and given me proof that we were created to crave God more than food, drugs, alcohol, shopping, or anything else. Amen. Debbie said, what has God done for me and taught me over the past several years? Well, God has shown me unconditional love and forgiveness and mercy when I was merciless. Not only through his son Jesus, but through the love of my husband as well. God has freed me from drug, alcohol, and sexual addictions. These addictions were leading me into all kinds of crazy and insane acts of rebellion. God has taught me how to forgive the abusers in my childhood as well as my adulthood, and has taught me how to not let these tragedies affect my life anymore. God has showed me how to have a personal relationship with him. He calms my spirit and speaks to my heart, mind, and soul. God has shown me that he is, has always been with me, is with me, and always will be with me. He has my best interests at heart. He is my safety, my rock, and my shelter. He has touched my heart to treat all people with more compassion and genuine caring, even in small acts of kindness. God has touched the hearts of family members and has restored many relationships. And God has blessed me and my family with opportunities that I would never have thought I would have seen in my lifetime. Mm, amen. Uh, next one. During this life group session, I have been allowed to serve as a purpose-driven life leader. Over the last two years, I have struggled with forgiveness in my marriage. I thought we had resolved a difficult time and a breach of trust, but while leading a group, I suddenly realized that I had truly forgiven my husband and how our marriage had truly healed through my willingness to serve, even when I was hurting. It brought me to tears when at that moment I knew it had been God working through me, helping others through my service. Pat said, I've really enjoyed this series on what on earth am I here for. It's been a review of what we've learned over the years, but also it has reaffirmed what I already know, to serve unselfishly. As I got, have gotten older, it seems I've become a little selfish with my time and energy. And this study has brought that home. My God has challenged me four times in the past three weeks to be more available to believers and unbelievers alike. That includes doing something nice for those who are housebound or have difficulty getting around or need personal contact with others. He's given me four examples of who and how I can do this. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Being a preacher's kid, I was told at an early age to set an example to the other kids in church. This started me on the road to live, or, or try to live, a perfect life, which led to my being a wonderful hypocrite. I did go to church, raised a family, and tried my best to fit into the religious box. A year ago, my wife Nancy and I attended the Alpha Course. I also started to sing in the choir for the Passion Play. My life was changed through Alpha and the choir experience. I quit trying to be a good person and a perfect Christian and a hypocrite and cried out to God during one of the Alpha quiet times, God, help me. I gave Jesus control over everything. 
I forgave people that I needed to forgive, and I asked God's forgiveness, and I asked God to guide and control my life. Nancy and I were both baptized last Easter. Through the study of a purpose-driven life, my mission is to serve God, and if it is His will, to be a small group leader and share my story with others. I thank God for Calvary and its ministers and the church. As we sang last Sunday, praise the Lord, I've seen the light. Jim. Sarah wrote, my testimony starts on March 28th of 2008. When I was 14, I was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia. When I first heard that I had cancer, I felt like God disliked me and he really didn't love me. I didn't understand what I did wrong. And as time went on, it only got worse. On April 1st of 2008, I had four shots of chemo put into my thighs and went home on 20 pills a day. Leading up to April 21st, I had multiple seizures and at one point yelled, help me, mom. And the next thing I remember was the sound of machines, the beep, beep, beep. When I finally came to, I couldn't move my right side. I faded in and out, and the next time I came to, I was told that I had had a partial lung removal and a bleed on my brain the size of a 50-cent piece. I couldn't talk or walk. As May came, it only got harder. I shaved my head and had drain, drain tubes coming out of my side. As June and July came, I had more lumbar punctures and a bone marrow aspirations and was now consuming 72 pills per day. I was admitted to the hospital for chemo and it began burning me from the inside out. I had blisters forming on the insides of my fingers and on my face. And I remember praying to God and asking why. I told him, I can't do this anymore. But little did I know this was only the beginning. In 2009, I decided to go back to school for my junior year of high school. Six weeks into school, I got the flu and it turned into H1N1. I remember the feeling of my body shutting down and I remember telling my brothers that I couldn't do this anymore. And I was done and so was my body. But God wasn't done with me yet. It was during that time, God and I had a conversation and he spoke to me and said, Sarah, I have never left you and I love you. The doctor said I had a 3% chance to live. At that time, I was in multi-system failure and multiple machines were keeping me alive. I had a spike in my fever and blood pressure at the same time, which led to a blood clot on my heart. And the doctors told my mom that she had to decide to call a code blue or just let me go. Looking back on this now and knowing that my cancer is in full remission, I know that God has shown me in the last 40 days of this purpose-driven life that he has always loved me. And he has used this tragedy to make me trust him more and put him first. I'm reminded every day when I wake up and I look in the mirror that God loves me and he's not finished with me yet. And being part of this 40-day challenge, I've learned that I have a purpose. I'm loved by God and I was created for his family. Amen. Yeah, celebrate them. So we serve an amazing God. Final testimony we're going to share this morning. Uh, my idyllic childhood came crashing down when I was raped by a supposed trusted friend at the age of 13. This led to me acting out in rebellion, drug use, and promiscuity. The cycle of destructive behavior led to depression, add to that miscarriages, abortions, and divorce, and I had a mental-emotional breakdown at 25. Mental illness began to define my life and resulted in multiple suicide attempts. I remember waking up after one attempt and crying because I failed to kill myself. My depression and suicide attempts led to a stay in a mental health care facility. When I was well enough to leave, I continued psychiatric care on an outpatient basis. I was offended and angry that my therapist recommended, even insisted, that I at try attending Calvary. I finally agreed and visited on a Saturday night in the fall of 2015. The music connected, and I felt like I knew the words before they were posted on the screen. I listened to the message and thought, I can keep coming if I get some questions answered. I met with Pastor Chad and asked the church's stance on mental health issues. And he said that Calvary believes in the power of God and medicine and counseling. That God uses all of it to bring health and healing. That went a long way toward building my trust in the church. 
I continued to attend faithfully, and the next time communion was served, I was ready to participate. I remember the band played it as well. And while I prayed and cried, I gave my life back to Jesus. I was baptized in June of last year, and now my parents and others that I've invited also attend Calvary. I've had rough times since I began following Jesus again, but it is all different now. I know that suicide is not an option, that God will provide the grace, love, and comfort that I need. I, I never was afraid of death. After all, I wanted to die. But now I don't fear death because I know my eternal destiny. Difference is, now I want to live. I have renewed interest in staying here as long as possible because I've got a lot of work still to do. My desires now are to love, care for, and serve others. I am now well enough to consider ret a return to the caring professions, and I want to live a life worthy of Christ. Since my return to Christ, I've been involved in multiple Bible studies, life groups, and prayer ministry. I, I hope to one day begin serving as a greeter. I am an improved version of the loving yet dysfunctional person I have always been. I am now able to flourish, to be good to myself and for others. My walk with Jesus is unique to me and yet similar to so many others. I don't think I would change any of, the, of my struggles along the way because they were what created my own special path to Jesus. It had to be this crazy winding road for me to find my true salvation in Jesus Christ. Isn't God amazing? Just the... The power to change our lives is real and active, and, and I hope that wherever you are in your journey, you are either encouraged because you're hearing these stories, or you are receiving hope because you think you're beyond that point of redemption. God has the power to change life, and we celebrate life change. We celebrate what God is doing, what He's done. Uh, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and we are told in Scripture to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And so we celebrate life change, and what now? We reflect. We reflect. As we conclude this series, I want to challenge you to, to dive into two questions that that really I hope you can answer, and if you can't, I hope that they kind of haunt you. Uh, here's the two questions. What has God taught me, and how has God changed me? What has God taught me? What did you learn about yourself, about God, about the Bible, about uh, how He's working in your life? How has God changed me? How am I different now than, than I used to be? Uh, you see, knowledge doesn't necessarily make us different doesn't change us loving christ leads us to change loving christ leads us to change you heard testimonies of life change what's your testimony of life change so here's the challenge uh, is you meet in your life groups this week to celebrate a lot of you're planning dinners potlucks going out whatever then take the time to actually ask those questions of each other share your answers with your uh, life group friends if you're not in a life group, because some of you aren't in life groups, that's fine. Get together with some of your friends that are here. Get together with your family and talk about those questions. Hey, what, what difference has God made in my life? What have I learned? So that's what we do now. That's the what now. Second question is this, what next? What next? We are following Jesus in his steps until the day we leave this earth. Uh, so what are you going to do to follow up the Purpose Driven Life series? Uh, what's next? And, uh, you know, some of you are excited about what God's been doing in your life. You're excited about where you are. Your, your, your life is going good. Your family is being healed. Things are redeemed. And you're going, okay, this is good. Now what next? I don't want this to stop. There's others of you who are really frustrated where you are right now. Your, your family's a mess. Your life is a struggle. And you're going, come on, this isn't any good. I, I need something different. So what's next? Wherever you are, let me give you uh, some challenges to help you on this journey for next steps. But before I share those uh, challenges that kind of for everybody, let me just tell you my conviction. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you already know what next. 
You already know what God wants you to do. See, God the Holy Spirit is in you. The moment you confess Christ as Savior, He inhabited you. And so He's the one who is the teacher. He's the one who's the convictor of sin. He's the one who's the comforter. He's the one who's going to lead you into truth. I believe He's already telling you in your life, in your soul, in your heart, you know what next. And the question is, are you going to do it? Because God's already telling you. I know I have conversations with people all the time, and they go, yeah, I know I shouldn't be doing this. Okay. Or, yeah, I know God's kind of been telling me I need to do this. And, and, okay, so here's my counsel to you. If you know what next, do it. That's wisdom right there, isn't it? If God's telling you to do something, then do it because he's going to lead you to life. He's going to bless you. He's going to change your life. And so often we kind of sit there and go, okay, God, I need you to do something. And God says, okay, here's what I want you to do. And we go, no. And then we wonder why God doesn't change our lives. So I think you already know what next, specifically for your life, then I'm just going to encourage you to do it. But uh, let me share with you three steps every follower can take to help them along on this journey. Step number one, commit to personal growth. Commit to personal growth. You've been reading and studying for the last 42 days. Don't stop. Here's what we did. We put a devotional guide in your bulletin today. If you've got a bulletin, you've got a devotional guide. And what it has is scripture readings for the next seven weeks. Uh, Starting next week, we're going to begin a sermon series called Last Words. We're going to be looking at Jesus' statements from the cross, if you will, statements of life from the moment of death. And and, uh, he said seven things. We're going to spend seven weeks doing that. We've given you scripture readings, one chapter of the Bible a day that you can read to kind of go along with what we're going to be talking about. So I'm just going to challenge you to keep reading. You've been reading? Keep reading. You, You weren't really good at reading that, but then be better at reading this. Okay? A chapter a day, it's not going to take you that long, but it's going to put you in the Bible, which we believe is the inspired and errant Word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. Listen to God. Grow in your personal faith. And show up. You guys have been attending really well. You've been watching them online. You've been having the discussions. Keep doing that. Just keep doing that. God's going to bless you. So uh, commit to personal growth. And secondly, connect to a life group. Connect to a life group. Some of you have tried life groups and you love it. Hey, a lot of people got baptized today because of the influence in their life groups. Some of you tried life groups and meh. You know, it wasn't all that. You weren't, you weren't thrilled. You weren't blown away. Maybe you didn't even like it. Well, here's my counsel. Try another life group. Okay? They, you know, all, it's not one size fits all. Try another life group. Maybe uh, that one didn't connect uh, because of just life and the way it was and people there. It's fine. It's a big family. You can find some people to hang out with. And uh, starting next week, uh, and actually the next two weeks, we're going to have sign-ups for life groups. Check out a life group. You're not sure about an in-home group? We're going to have alpha groups. We're going to have alpha life starting on March 16th, Thursday nights at the McCulloch campus. And it's an open group, large group. You can, you can come and check it out and learn the basics of Christianity. Some of you are like, yeah, I don't know enough to go sit in a group because people might ask me questions. Fine, take alpha. We assume in alpha that nobody knows nothing. And it's just what it is. It's like starting from zero. You don't know it? We're going to teach it. So uh, check it out. But but life groups are life-changing. So commit to personal growth, connect to a life group, and find a serve. Find a serve. Give back, help, lead others to life change. I don't know if you noticed the testimonies that we read. At least three of them talked about how God had changed them through serving others. So you find a way to serve. Whether it's here in the church, helping out in the early childhood, being a a first impressions greeter, working with teenagers or children or tech or on worship, uh, find a way to help. Serve in the community. We've got a need, uh, it's in your bulletin, so you can check it out, for 15 people to help out ASU teach fourth graders this week doing a science project fair kind of thing. What we need is basically some adults who will go in there and not blow stuff up and make sure the kids don't blow stuff up. And... uh, and it's all to do with water and stuff like that. And some of you are sitting here and going, yeah, I'm not doing anything Wednesday and Thursday. I can go get trained, and then I can do that Thursday and bless kids. It's something to do. Go and be present in the community and bless. We've got projects scheduled for March at Havasupai Elementary in April at Nautilus Elementary. And in May, we're doing teacher appreciation. And then we're going to Peach Springs. We've got ways you can bless. So get involved and represent Jesus in Lake Havasu City and watch God work in your life and through your life. The Apostle Peter said, For to this you have been called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you 
might follow in his steps. You got to decide what your next step is going to be. Let's pray.